the truth about life is that unless we are introspective, unless we take those moments and really look within and question ourselves, it'll pass us by and we'll continue living day after day, just going through the motions and never living to be our true best self. And it's during those moments when we ask ourselves the tough questions that I truly believe that we can become the next best version of ourselves. And so I wanna go through 10 questions that I believe if you ask yourself these questions continually, that these are the ways that you can change your life just by simply asking questions and answering them with brutal honesty. Because unless we answer things with brutal honesty, then, um, and really that truth, even if it's ugly, even if it's something that we don't wanna admit, um, you know, that's the place where we can change. That's where we can become the next best version of ourselves. And, um, you know, you can learn a lot about yourself. You can learn a lot about myself just by asking simple questions. And questions direct your attention to make you think, you know. And so um, the best people I love being around, um, some of the people that, like, just really capture me are ones that when I'm talking to them or um, discussing something, they ask the best questions. There's one girl I know that, um, man... Um, whenever I get a chance to talk to her, I get so excited because I know she's going to ask me the best questions, which really make me dig deep and really make me find out my truth and what I think and what I believe and challenge myself. And so um, if you never ask yourself questions, let's face it, you might limit the amount of progress that you actually make in your life. And I don't want that for you. Um, the questions you ask yourself or fail to ask yourself can alter ultimately this course of our life and consider the answer to these questions on a regular basis are you ready let's dig in number one what are the most important things i need to accomplish tomorrow what are the most important things that i need to accomplish tomorrow when you make the most out of each day you can make the most out of your life um, you know, avoid starting a new day without a plan of action. We should go into every day with a plan. We should know what, what our purpose is for that day, even if it's family time, even if it's self-care. But we should have a plan of action. Our days, we can't get back, right? I cannot get this moment back. I cannot get this hour back. I cannot get this day back. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be wasting any more days. I've wasted enough days in my life, um, you know, beating myself up, not living up to my full potential. Um, you know, living other people where other people want me to be instead of living my true self. So what is that you need to accomplish today? What are your goals? You know, give your your day some thoughts the night before. So before I go to your bed, like have your plan of action. I have my plan of action. Before I go to bed, I know exactly what my top priorities are that day and what it's going to look like. So make that plan. Number two, which activities and people are a waste of my time? Which activities and people are wasting my time? What things am I spending my time on? And what people are I surrounding myself on that are wasting my time? We all make, um, we all fail to make the most out of our time. No matter who we are, including myself, there are things that I waste my time on. There are people, there are things that I do that are a waste of my time. Where activities do little more than serve as distractions or drains, right? Maybe there's a drain on us, maybe it's a distraction. We also have people in our lives that are distractions, who are toxic, right? Or even worse, they're ones that maybe hold us back from becoming the next version of ourselves. They're the ones that keep us from being real, from being alive. And maybe they have so much drama and problems and it's fine to show up for people. But if they're bringing you down, if they're degrading to you, if they're not encouraging to you, we need to get rid of those people. And think about the activities and the people that are costing you more than they're worth. Um, our greatest currency is not money. It's time, right? Money we can make more of. Time we can't get back. And so if they, you know, if, if an addiction, if, um, you know, is costing, that's costing us a lot of time, right? We waste a lot of time in our addictions and our, in these patterns. It's self, they're actually self-harm type patterns. They're not bringing us to the next version of ourselves. We're self-sabotaging our dreams. Um, and we need to cut those things out of our lives. And the only way we can do that is really by Asking that question, like, really, sit down, I encourage you, like, today, ask yourself that question. As you go through your day, ask yourself, is this activity something that's draining me? Is this something that's, I, I don't have to have in my life that's draining me? Is there something I could be doing that's better and more productive with my time? Is this person just being constantly toxic? Are they bringing me down? Do I feel worse after being with them? Um, not saying you don't show up for people who, because everyone needs people. Sometimes we have to limit, you know, and sometimes people will 
latch on and you know and you have to let those people go because we can't fight everyone's battle for them sometimes they have to learn how to fight their own we can't enable people um so surround yourself with people who support you and it's something i'm learning to do um because i used to be the one who like i always had such toxic people all the time y'all um to this day like i'm like a toxic person magnet um so i you know now i have some people that can actually like question things off of and be like hey um so what do you think of this situation? Um, because I just, I want to believe the best in for people, but that leads me down a path where I'm being taken advantage of and I'm being drugged into their drama and it holds me back and it's draining me. And then I, you know, when we're stressed, what happens? We go back to old patterns that we gave up. And so it's this vicious cycle. So who, who do you need to cut out of your life? What activities do you need to cut out of your life? What do you need to do more of in your life? What are those things that are bringing you to the, your next best version of yourself? What are the things that you could do that are, um, you know, where the people who are, you know, maybe one step further than you, that you could aspire to be like, you know, you're what the sum total of the five people that we spend the most time with. I'm looking for people who are further than I am, that I want to be like, and those are the people I'm surrounding myself with, not these people that I don't want to be like, right? You know, there's time and place to help people out, and I'm all about that, but there's my inner circle from now on, the people I surround myself with, people who are who I want to become like who are pushing me further up than I am um because I want to grow I want to be more than I am today number three what are my long-term plans you know sometimes people can't tell you what 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 do you really want out of life and the great thing to do is that old what they call the like the rocking chair um test if I was you know on a rocking chair and you know 90 some years old looking back on my life and um it was the best year of my life, you know, or it was that I lived the life that I wanted to. Could do a year, could do it for the whole thing, right? If, if looking back, I did my life, I lived my life, and I, I was proud of it. Like, I had no regrets. What things would have been incorporated in my life? What, what would that look like? And then the flip of it, you know, what things, if you keep doing, are going to make you say, I really wasted a lot of time. I didn't become the best version of me. You know, what are your long-term plans? What do you really want in life? What is the overall objective of your life? If you don't know that, you'll struggle to plan your time appropriately. I know what I want out of life. I know what I want to do. I know I know what my business wants. I want, you know, I know this dream in my heart. And I know that's my priority. And that's what I'm going after. And there's a reason for that. And nothing's going to stop again. It's way. Because I have something I'm really living for beyond myself right now. And, um... So my time gets centered around there any, any moment I have. And so, you know, we'll make right, wiser decisions if we know what we're trying to accomplish over the next decade or more. So when it takes some time to dream, you determine. You know, no one else can determine, we determine. Clarify your goals and where you want to be in 10 years. Write it down and refer to it often. I have my goals, my current goals I'm working on, like my main ones, like the, I have like my I have a goal for this week that I want to make sure I accomplish, a goal for this month, and then I have a goal like for the end of the year. There's three that are really kind of my focus right now. I write those three goals every single morning down. They're, they are in front of me. I re write them. I read them out loud. They're in front of me because what happens, we set goals in January, and then do we ever look at them again? No. And then we wonder why we never accomplish anything because they're not in front of us. If we keep things in front of us, then that's how we're going to accomplish them, right? By reviewing to them often is what we write down. Number four, what did I do poorly today and what can I do better tomorrow? You know, there's, we have to be brutal honest with ourselves. I, you guys, I mess up, I fuck up. Man, I don't do things right all the time. It's just the way it is, right? Every day, there's, I mean, maybe I was a little more short with someone. Maybe I didn't say the nicest thing. Maybe I didn't come from an understanding place. Um, maybe I wasted time. Maybe I could have been more organized or maybe I could have, there's so many different things, right? So I'm constantly evaluating what would did not go well for today? What were those things and why were they? So I think not only, you know, what didn't go well, but why? Because um, was it, you know, we need to evaluate errors and poor decisions and then learn from them. And there's a reason why we, what happened? Was it, a, did I get did I not manage my emotions well? Did I get overwhelmed? Did was an external circumstance was something I couldn't control maybe happen? Making a mistake once is a part of life, right? I mean, let's face it, we all make mistakes, right? That's going to happen. Making a mistake more than once because you didn't learn from it, in my opinion, is tragic. 
And I had to get to a point in my life where I was like, I have a lot of stuff that's tragic in my life at this point. A lot of things that I've made a mistake more than once and I didn't learn from it. Like, hello, Jen. How many times do you have to learn the same stupid lesson? Like, you're wasting your time, right? So, and the only way we can do that, once I started really asking myself that question each night, um, it really helped. And then I was able to track my patterns. Like, oh my gosh, during stressful times, I really do poorly in this area. Or um, during this time of year, I do really poorly in this area. Or if I have a conversation with this person, then, you know, then it kind of derails me for the day. Well, that's a toxic person I probably need to get rid of, right? So it really helps. And number five, what did I do well today? So We don't want to just focus on the negative, you know, because we need to focus on what we've done well, too, because what, we, what do we do? We do more of that. And if I have an area in my life that I want to improve, right, let's say, like, I want to, okay, maybe I'm doing really, really well in my career, but I want to improve with my family, or maybe I want to improve my fitness. I'm going to look at the things I'm doing well in my career. Why am I doing so well in the career? What, what am I doing that's making it well? And then just apply this kind of same concepts to the other areas of my life, right? I mean, obviously, I show up to work every day, right? So maybe I need to start showing up to my workouts every day. I show up, maybe I need to start showing up to my family every single day, right? I give my best when I'm at work. Well, give my best when I work out with my family. So it's just important to identify what we did well. So we can do that again as well. I'm identifying and feeling good about your victories. Also build your confidence, self-esteem, and optimism for the future. Here's one that I know about you, but confidence, self-esteem, and optimism, I think we call you somewhere that have today, um, which makes a bright future um, more likely to happen because what we focus on, right, is going to become. And so, number six, and normally, this is what I put in here, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more because I don't want you to think that I'm talking about comparing yourself or like taking what other people's opinions of you and defining you. But it's this is a very, how does the rest of the world view me? And I'm not, I'm saying this. You're going to go one way. I'm totally not going that way. So stay with me. All right. I am. I refuse to be defined by what any other person says about me. I refuse anymore to be defined by opinions of man and the judgments and all those kind of things. That being said, if I kind of look at general themes of what's being said, right? If we listen... Is there any truth in that sometimes? If I'm able to take a brutal inner perspective, looked at myself, and say this is working, this is not working, a lot of times in life, you know, this is a difficult question to ask, but we are clueless as to how others, how we appear to others. Maybe I appear someone who never apologizes. I never realized that, right? I have someone I know right now, never apologizes, never, ever, 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 right? And, um, you know, and I think they're totally unaware of it. Totally unaware of it. Great person, but not doesn't apologize. And so, um, you know, I think sometimes we don't realize. Um, and for me, I can be, I can get like, my mind will go to like, spiral over. Like, I have tons of thoughts, right? But I've had to point out too before that sometimes it can seem like we're not paying attention to the person. So I've made efforts and steps by listening to that feedback from other people that when I'm with someone, like, I've, Fully, like I have certain things I like do to make sure I'm fully engaged and that my mind doesn't drift off. Um, you know, or if it does, like I'm able to call it right back again because I want that person to feel important, like because they are, and I want them to, you know, feel seen, heard, and understood. I can't do that if I'm, you know, and I would never realize that unless actually it was some kids that told me if you really want to know how people perceive you, go teach a bunch of first graders for a year. You'll learn all the stuff about yourself that you never realized. Um, you know, we have our own vision of ourselves in our mind, but often it's far from the truth. And we can, if we can see ourselves as the world sees us, we'll find those few simple tweaks that we can change. And the, res and the results from changing those things will actually be dramatic in our lives. Um, just because a lot of times it's the smallest things that really hold us back and we don't realize it. Maybe I'm always late, you know, and... I know I'm late, but I don't realize how much people, like, that annoys people. And it does. Maybe it does. Or maybe, um, maybe I'm always cutting people off in their sentences. Or maybe I don't follow through very well. Or maybe I, you know, there's lots of different things. See how the world views you. Now, is some of the stuff people are going to say crap? Yeah, of course. So don't listen to that. Maybe take your inner circle, your closest friends who are looking out for the best of you, and ask them that. Your family, if you're close to your family. Number seven, I cannot stress enough. What are my values? And am I living them? So 
we each have to define our own values. Like, what is your true north? What are you, what do you stand for? What will you not stand for? And, um, you know, many people don't, don't have this one. Most people ha are fuzzy about their ideas of their values. So once you know what your values are, it's easier to make decisions and to that are sustain and build your own self-esteem as well as um, make you feel like you're honoring yourself. Because I don't know about you, if I do something that's not true to my values, true to my beliefs and all that, I feel off. Like, I can tell. Like, I feel like a bad person. I feel like there's something wrong. And so, um, you know, that's important. And so n knowing your values and living them, also creating a life that you are fine fulfilling. You know, I think if we're not living true true values, then... Um, we're not being fulfilled. We never can be, can we? If we, if I am trying to please everybody else and live up to everyone else's standards, but yet maybe they're not mine, not being my true self. And it's when we're not being our authentic selves that I think we really hold ourselves back. We have to be authentically us. And so number eight, what are my greatest flaws and what can I do to correct them? We all have them. Don't we? I do. I have plenty of them. So what are your greatest flaws and what can you do? Everyone has a critical flaw that's holding them back. But, you know, a few few are rare of their significant flaws. There's not a time where you can ask people around you. Spend time thinking about this and ask some of your honest friends for advice. Like, what is my biggest, what are my biggest flaws? And, I mean, for me, the way I think and perceive, like, things, my mind, man, is my one of my biggest flaws. Like, I, I will beat myself up, you know, and it's not not good you know and then like I don't know like that's not good if it's not not good for me it's not good for the people around me it's not good for anything when I do that um no I tend to stay in toxic friendships and relationships way too long um you know be used and stuff but that's not good right I tend to try to do too much all at once and then nothing gets done um, so I like I know my flaws and so we know your flaws and then we can work on those and you know or outsource them Like I'm not good at marketing and sales. I'm looking at hiring <laughs> someone to do that because that's just one of my flaws Like I'm just not good, but I don't have to do that Like I could hire someone to do that. So, you know some things we just can outsource number nine What can I do to enhance my most important relationship? So who are those people that really matter in your life? Think about what you can do to lift your relationship up to the next level. I think there's always another level we can go. And so many times, we can settle. We can settle for less than than um, what the relationships could be. If both people are willing to learn and grow, whether it be a friendship, a business partnership, um, or, you know, with your kids, or... Um, spouse, whatever it is, we can always be going to the next level. What can I do to enhance this relationship? How can we be pushing each other to be better people? What can I do to really show them they're important and engage their needs and stuff, right? And then number 10, without this one, um, you know, I think this is perhaps one of the most significant things we can do. And use there's a lot of buzz around it, but there's power in it. Who and what am I grateful for? And how am I going to show it to them? Like, I like to add that action behind it. So what are we going to do behind it? So this is the great question to ask yourself each day, but especially when you're feeling frustrated or down, um, you know, that sadness, that disappointment, that can't, can't reside within the same place as gratitude. And so think of good things in life that will lift your spirits, give you a more optimistic view of life, and make more good things likely to happen ultimately. And so... Um, you know, I do gratitude three times a day because I think it's important. When I wake up, when around like midday, and then right before I go to bed, what you think before you go to bed is how you're going to wake up. So if we can go to bed and have an action plan, what am, things I'm going to do for the next day, what things I do awesome today, what am I grateful for? What am I going to do? And then, you know, I think of like who am I grateful for. I try to think of one person every day at least to encourage. So think of someone each day that like it could be simply <laughs> – you know, someone that you just see randomly or, you know, maybe every time when you go and do one thing every week, you know, you see this person, well, hammer and a hammer and letters and like, man, thanks for, you know, buy them, buy them coffee or something, do something nice for somebody else. And, you know, that you can say that there's something so amazing about them. Be grateful for those people. Find those little bits 
Uh, you know, we rise by lifting others up, don't we? I think there's a lot of truth to that. Um, my best thing to do when I'm down in the dumps is go serve and do something for other people because if I'm serving and helping other people, then I am not so inward focused on having a self-pity party, which really probably doesn't even need to have because we're very lucky and blessed if you live in America, right? Uh, and so we just went through 10 questions. You could just sit and you could be like, oh, those are great questions. But the true thing to do is take action. Um, so many times we watch videos. And there's a time when you need to stop watching the video and you start taking actions. You know, some of these questions are a bit tough, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't tackle them. You know, we have to face that fear. We have to go into that fear. We have to actually do something about it, right? And if I'm not uh, making progress, if I'm not doing something, if I'm not facing what I, things that scare me, if I'm not, like, becoming the next best version of myself, I am wasting my time. Me too, I could watch videos all day long about it, how to build a business, new things. But until I actually start doing it, nothing's going to ever change and I will ever live that next level myself. So something as simple as a few questions might be all you need to change and alter the direction of your life. Ensure that you're not just asking and answering the questions, though. Take action when appropriate to you with all, I think all of them do. And you know what? You'll be glad you did. So you ready? Let's review those 10 questions one more time. And then I would love to know in the comments um, what, and I would love to answer one of these questions if you want. Or let me know, do you ask yourself questions? Or how often will you answer? What are you going to commit to do? Like, how are you going to apply this? Like, let's let's say how we're going to do it. You never know. Your answer of, like, how you're going to do something might be the answer to help someone else who feels stuck and doesn't know what to do. So share what you're going to do. And when we vocalize it, when we say it, that's when actually, like, Things happen, right? If I can stay in my mind, but then I'm not really committed to because I didn't, no one else really knows about it, right? But if I'm forced myself to like actually say it a lot of people, then it actually has to happen because I actually com have to commit to it. And so, ready, number one, what are the most important things I need to accomplish tomorrow? And with that, what we're going to do, make sure they're aligned with us and we're going to make sure it's done the night before. Two, what activities and people are a waste of my time? We're going to go through our days and we're going to start cutting out those activities. So either drain them and bring us to the next level of best self. Who are those? Really think about them in your life. Number three, what are my long-term plans? <laughs> think of that rocking chair. In my life, I look back. If What things would I regret not doing? Four, what did I do poorly today and how can I do better about that tomorrow? Think about what was something that didn't go well. And then ask yourself why too because sometimes when you see if it's circumstantial, you know, maybe things didn't go well. Maybe I, man, I ate a whole bunch today. I was binge eating today. Well, why? Why didn't I, you know, stressful, I didn't deal with my emotions. Okay, so what's the, what do we need to do in the future? I need to learn how to deal with my emotions, right? So look for patterns. Five, what did I do well today? And how can I do more of that in my life? Or what area of my life is going well? And how can I start applying the same things I do well to the parts that aren't going so well? Um, key factors there, right? And then six, how does the rest of the world view me? Not so that it defines me, not so that I take that on my own. I'm going to listen to those that have valid say in my life. And I'm going to seek for patterns and see if there's some blind spots that I don't see in my life that's hindering me from being effective within my, my realm, my circle, my, in the world. What can I do to become a better version so that I am not being a hindrance to other people, so I'm being respectful, so I'm showing other people like I should. Because um, sometimes, you know, we don't realize that us being late, five minutes late every day is really like holding us back in life. Uh, seven, what are my values and am I living them? I encourage you, go on nature, sit down, really say, what are my values? Like, what are my core values? things that I will not, no matter what, I don't want to waver on. Like, what's what's my true north? Write them down. And then ask yourself, are you, what does it look like to live live them? You know, what does that look like? I mean, actually make it so it's visual. What does that look like? And am I living them? If not, how can I incorporate them into my life? What are the top ones? What am I going to do to make changes? And then with that, am I living some other values that need to be cut out that aren't mine or aren't serving me too? I think we go the other way with that question too. Why not, right? Number eight. What are my greatest flaws and what can I do to correct them? Or make, what is my greatest flaw? What's the one flaw in my life that I know I'm so annoyed with myself? Like, I can't believe I keep doing this. I need, like, I need to stop. I know it's holding me back, right? What's that great flaw? Maybe we're not organized enough. We're clean enough. Maybe we, maybe, um, we hit the snooze button too much, right? It's holding us back. We're late. Time. Or maybe we, we're last minute on projects. Or, uh, maybe I'm really critical of other people. Whatever it is. 
And what, what things can I do to actually make action to change that? You know, because like I said, we have to take action if they're going to stay the same. Number nine, what can I do to enhance my most important relationships? Find out, okay, I'm cutting out the toxic ones. Now, who are the ones that are important to me? Who are those important people to me? And when I see those, then what can I do to enhance those? How can I be the one that takes action to actually make it better than it was today? Not wait for them to make it better and just not wait for it to stay. Like, what can I do to actually make it better? Because um, I think that's essential. And then 10, what and who am I grateful for? And how can I thank those people that I'm grateful for? You know, morning, afternoon, evening. Start with it. End with it. Sandwich it in between. You'll change your life and you'll help change other people's lives because you're thankful too. And once again, we can ask ourselves these questions. But unless we actually take action with them, they don't matter. These are questions that are in my my daily. So in the evenings, these are the questions I ask myself. I check myself every single day with these 10 questions. You could do it weekly, you could do it monthly, you could do it quarterly. Um, I have deeper ones I do, but this is my daily. Because um, I want to know daily, what am I doing? Daily, how am I showing up? Daily, how can I improve? You know, it's just some feedback I'm getting from other people that like, ooh, this is, this feedback, this came back five times this week. Like, I know some people said, like, this, I mean, I need to work on this area in my life. You'll start seeing patterns, and from there, you'll be able to make changes. And so, um, I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments what you're going to do. Um, and if you haven't met before, make sure you like, subscribe, follow if you want a holistic approach to living a fit life where we're within our mind, our emotions, our body, our energy. It's really those micro habits, which is simply like questioning, right? That we become the best version of ourselves. We can't live an authentic, truly fit life um, in one area, one component, where you try to compartmentalize our lives too much, but we're, you know, we're, we're, everything affects each other. But how I think, right? It's going to determine how I feel, and how I feel is going to determine my actions, right? It flows, right? So I need to my thinking's off, then I really need to start there, right? Or, you know, we need to find the source of things and learn to combine them all into really being the best version of us, not what someone else wants, but who you're supposed to be. Because I know about you. I want you to end my life on that rocking chair and know that I played full out, know that I showed up, and know that I didn't. I didn't. I left nothing for chance. You know, I left it all on there. I, like, played out, like, you know, whatever, you know, the last football game, you know, and it's the Super Bowl that, you know, our quarterback's ever going to play. What are they going to do? They're going to leave it all on the game, on the field, right? They're going to leave it all out there. They're going to go all out. They're going to hold nothing back. It's their last game. It's the last Super Bowl they're ever going to play. They're going to go and they're going to leave it all on the field. I want to know that I left it all. Held nothing back. And we can only do that when we start looking and asking ourselves questions. We learn to really be brutally honest with ourselves in every area. So being fit, fearlessly inspiring together because we need each other. So um, reach out to me anytime. There's plenty of ways to get me in the show notes if you're interested in some nutrition coaching, some personal training, group, my group fitness classes, or any one of my life coaching series. Um, and in my workshops, please definitely reach out to me. I'd love to connect with you. Or if you just really have some questions or some things, they feel free to comment too below. If you have a question you'd like me to answer on this channel, that's how I get a lot of my ideas is by your questions. So what questions do you have about living a fit life? Put it in the comments below and I will make a video about it. All right, tribe, be brave, be kind, live authentically, and shine. Remember, you're just one habit away. Maybe that 180, that new way of going, right? Just do that 180 fit. Um, he's one of these. All right. Let's do it 180 fit.